Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning, UK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Lois is holding the camera at <laughs> the phone. Absolutely. Oh, tell me about it. Morning, you okay? Yeah. Morning, Mike. All good. Yeah, you you well, Peter? I'm glad Lois is oh, holding very good, the camera. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, tell me about it. Yes. You okay? Stay on mute unless. Morning, mate. Requested otherwise. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you you well, Peter? Lois is very good. Thank you. Yeah, hell good. Morning, mate. Requested otherwise. Oh, Lord. Yeah, you you well, Peter? Lois is very good. Yeah, hell good. Yeah, all good. We're going to have quite a few people in the room today, so. Uh, yeah. Morning, mate. Good, thank you. Yeah, all good. Yeah, all good. We're going to have quite a few people in the room today, so. Uh, Morning, mate. Okay, probably going to have to ask everybody to mute because this is going to be chaos. <laughs> Okay, well, whilst we're waiting for everybody to come in, we'll have um, I'll put it on gallery uh, at the end. We can uh, we can have a catch up and a, and a chat then. Uh, we've got quite a bit to get through. Just waiting for a few more to come in. We had seventy eight booked in, uh, and then there's fifty seven um, uh, uh, coming in on live stream. So um, we'll give it a give it another minute. Um, we've got plenty to get through today. So um, it's good to see you all. And uh, we'll get going uh, in just another minute, and uh, <clears throat> the others will catch up. And uh, yeah, just um... yep. Okay. Okay. So somebody's just joining us. A few more. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been very popular on this one. Okay. Right. Okay. So, welcome to the Vision to Success Digital Marketing Workshop, how to select the best marketing strategies for your business. Uh, which I'm looking forward to presenting today because it's a culmination of a long, quite a long, a lot of years of um, of work and research, testing, experimenting, reading lots of books. Um, the uh, these these workshops, uh, as as many of you know, are part of a regular series of uh, workshops that were designed to help you take your vision and realize it into a successful business. So the overall structure for the next hour will be uh, the short introduction as to um, who and what Vision Success is all about. Uh, then the educational presentation on um, how to select uh, the best marketing strategies. Uh, and then uh, there'll be a chance to ask questions at the end. I do have um, uh, the chat window open. Uh, Rachel, uh, my co-host, will um, be checking on YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, we are recording these uh, sessions and uh, this course, as I'll tell you in a minute, is actually uh, this is actually a course which you can do at your leisure, <clears throat> which is on our uh, marketing community hub. And uh, and then once we've been to all the questions, uh, either during the presentation or... Um, yeah, absolutely. At the end, um, the... Um, uh, we'll then open the floor to any other marketing questions that you may have. Okay, so with the, without further ado, um, <clears throat> we're going to work on today uh, how to select the best marketing strategies for your business. So a lot of, uh, quite a few of you know who I am, but very briefly for those who don't, uh, business and digital coach, been doing this for the last 20 plus years. 
uh, work with over 500 companies, although with all these peer groups and things I'm doing, I'm probably number is probably a bit low now. Been working with technology since 1984 and uh, 30,000 connections on LinkedIn. Uh, Charlie, my daughter, uh, runs uh, the uh, business is going to get split uh, sometime this year. So we'll have Vision to Success, uh, which is a training coaching strategy arm. And then we've got a full on digital agency, uh, which Charlie and Rachel, who's on the call today, um, uh, uh, run and uh, manage. So few um, housekeeping, running speaker view during the presentation, and then <clears throat> at the end, we'll put it into gallery view. Um, use mute when not talking. Um, uh, if you need to ask a question, uh, please put it into chat. I've got chat op uh, open on my um, uh, on the window on, on the screen, so hopefully you should see it. And as I say, Rachel will be picking up any messages that uh, are posted on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. And um, and keep your video on if you want to participate, and switch off you switch it off if you don't want to be recorded. Because as I say, we are live streaming and recording, and these recordings will be made available later. So why why go to all this trouble? I've got screens and all sorts of bit of tech flying around now because we're we're uh, uh, we're because of the restreaming side of things. <clears throat> well, it's to help you guys compete in the digital world. We as an agency recognise that the rules keep changing uh, on a on a, at least a weekly basis, um, and, and and new things appear, which can be change, game changers. I mean, I'm sure you've all been involved, all sort of heard about the. Um, um, the uh, chat GPT, which is the AI writing tool. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to change the world yet, guys, but it's it's it actually indicates the direction which it's going. Uh, we've been using uh, AI tools for, for quite some time now. It's not new. It's the fact that it, <clears throat> it's free is, is a new bit. Um, we've been using a thing called Jasper, which is a far more powerful tool. Um, so we're going to help you build on your knowledge uh, we're helping you get here to solve digital marketing problems. And we're kind of building, I want to build a community so you guys can support each other. Um, it's all about collaboration. <clears throat> There's so much stuff going on in the world. We need to be on top of to, on top of things. And you, you only do that by having an extended team, whether that's paid or unpaid or just loose connections that uh, keep you up to date. So what's Vision to Success? Where it's a free Monday morning at free Wednesday workshops every month. Um, we've got the free community, which I'll brief you on in a minute. We do have paid uh, support programs for those who want it. And um, really exciting. <laughs> it's got February launch. It's now a March launch. Um, but we are very close to a stable version of the app. So the methodology that you will see today, and that's, that's uh, wrapped up in the course, which is uh, freely available, um, is, the, is, the tech, is the methodology that's behind the app. And it's designed to take you through all the questions that you should should be answering um, in order to, um, to put together a coherent strategy that uses the, your resources to the best. I mean, I was looking at a, a set of numbers today because we do the, I do the financial modeling and 50% um, <clears throat> of their cost of marketing costs, and that's before the cost of goods and so on. So, you know, that needs to come down substantially before that's going to become a profitable business. Uh, and of course, we do <clears throat> marketing strategy development and uh, implementation consultancy. Um, but the idea of the workshops and the and the hub is that you can do it itself as help help. So how do you make it self help? Well, we've got this free marketing platform, uh, a hub, and uh, where can you be community? So uh, you can join, uh, click start here. Uh, if you go to hub.vision2success.co and uh, which Rachel's uh, very kindly put into the messages to everyone, um, uh, you'll be able to sign up free of charge. Uh, and then please introduce yourselves. Um, <clears throat> this is not particularly set out to be a networking platform. We do have a networking forum. So if there's anything you want to share, uh, your expertise or what you're doing, uh, then please do that in the networking bit. But please also introduce yourself uh, so that people know who you are. 
Um, numbers are growing quite rapidly. We're up to 126 um, uh, on the platform as of, I think, last night. Um, these are the free courses to date. Uh, and this one here, Introduction to Marketing Strategy for Business Owners, is what I'm presenting today. We are changing the format slightly so that um, uh, when I do a, one of these workshops, uh, it's already a course. <clears throat> And um, and so over the months, you'll see this build up into quite a free, you know, quite a large free resource. Uh, we are on skills growth, um, the skills growth map uh, system for uh, Growth Co, which is the Greater Manchester platform for uh, helping businesses. Uh, and they give me a list of the three other courses that they regularly get demand for. We've already done those presentations a little while ago. I just need to convert them into a course. And then again, um, that's more free resource. And it's it's to save you doing YouTube, guys. Um, I've collated all the information together in one place. Um, yes, all this stuff is on available on YouTube, but you'll find hopefully that it's a lot easier to digest. And because the set is courses, you can pause, stop, listen, it's got actions for you to follow, et cetera. The design to help you to learn. Um, uh, we've written the book, uh, so it's all that, always good to have a bit of credibility. Um, but the, I think the online courses are the main sources where people want help. So we move on to how to select the best marketing strategies for your business. Like I say, this was, I really started working on this about six years ago and worked with many companies using different aspects of it. Uh, and then last, um, about 18 months ago now, we started the um, uh, building an app to do to do this so that you can do it for yourself. If you don't have the money or if you're a marketing consultant and you want to improve the speed which you can do a strategy, um, then then this tool is, is for you. Um, so... We're going to look at what is a marketing strategy, what's going to impact your strategy, and then what's it going to be, um, who you're selling to, developing your value proposition. And then the sort of key bit, we have done this as a whole workshop, uh, the brand story, the story brand uh, aspect. But for me, this then pulls in the, uh, is the link between your strategy and your, what you're going to put together as a customer journey and uh, your marketing if you like your we call it an ecosystem it's basically a flow chart of all your marketing resources how they link together and uh, how they how that um how that all works so a lot to get through 76 slides it's a bit ambitious <laughs> as per normal um but uh, i did want to to share that, this with you so purpose of the marketing strategy is to make sure that most people have got scarce resources i was looking at as i said the numbers today they were spending 5% of their um, turnover on, on marketing. Uh, and, and generally, if you're marketing, to, if you're to doing 5%, I don't think I could justify them increasing that spend. So if they want more out of their marketing, we've got to fine tune it, which is what we're going to propose to do. If you're spending 1% of your turnover marketing, then you've got some headroom to increase budget. You may not want to, but, but realistically, your budget should sit between 2 and 5% of your turnover. So what is it? What, what, what is the actual strategy? Well, it's a long-term plan for achieving your goals. Um, if, you haven't got any, if you haven't got any three- or ten-year goals, then one of your actions from this meeting, doesn't matter whether you're a one-man band or whether you're you know, a £50 million pound business, you, you need to have um, clear goals. And they must, must match with your personal goals because there's, if there's a disconnect, um, you'll fall out of love with your business. Um, and so it's it's very important that uh, you, you make the right choices because <clears throat> that's what the world, that's what running a business is all about, getting those, getting those choices as um, optimised as you can. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, we look running across the top and... Um, so it's what you want to, obje uh, your objectives, what do you want to achieve? Um, and then, you know, what are your 10-year, um, uh, three-year um, and one-year goals? The three-year one should be concrete-ish. 
10 year ones can be a bit flat um sort of you know a bit nebulous sort of you're not sure but you you, you kind of know where you want to go um three years you need to have a clear vision of, of what you want to achieve you may not know how to achieve it but you need, need to know that and then one year should take you on that journey um we're going to look at the external pressures um uh, and we'll, we'll talk about how how we look at those external pressures and say we're at a period of time when I have never known so much external pressure on a business um uh, and then we're going to look at actually what is it what is your strategy going to be what are you going to do about this lot uh and then very importantly and uh is, is about communication how are you going to get that message over and then we're going to look at implementation okay so why develop a strategy well in the old days you'd you'd, you'd make something and then advertise it uh, and hopefully the world will come um uh but now it's it's all pull it's all customer demand people will sort of say i want to do this they'll research how to do something and they may end up on ebay amazon or or, or a specific uh, uh, site the customer definitely has the power uh and and um if you're selling, you don't want to be selling. You want people to buy from you. Um, and we're, we're going to do a bit of a deep, deeper dive into that <clears throat> because, you, you know, you've all been on sales training courses where they teach about objection handling and so forth. Well, if you've developed the right products or service for your for your, for your your customers, then there shouldn't really be objections. Um, and it's about making it so that people can so that people can then buy from you you know what is it is what how are you developing that trust so that they can do that okay if you're not read it this is a this is a uh, must read for any business owner um it's a quick read you can watch it if you don't want to if you're not into books right um go onto youtube and search for start with why and simon sinek um he's yeah he's he's it, it, it nails it as to why you need to uh, have a purpose. And, and a, a number of the greats, Jim Collins of Good to Great, also talks about having a purpose. Simon calls it a why. It doesn't matter. It's it's why you're in business. Uh, for example, ours is we want to help companies grow. It's something I enjoy doing. It's, it's It gives a purpose to the business. We make the world a better place if people are better uh, running better businesses. Sounds a bit highfalutin. But it, it's something everybody in the team can buy into. It's not all about profit and targets and sales and so on. Well, those are, although those are clearly important. So because this is a course, uh, I'm not proposing that we go through these in detail uh, now. But um, these are your actions. If you do want to do the course, go onto the hub. Uh, and um, Rachel's put it into uh, the um, into the chat. Uh, so click on that, join it, and then you can do this course at your leisure. So that's why I'm, we've got too many slides for the time period, but it, I, I just want to take you through the methodology and then give you a chance to ask. And as this stuff's coming up, by the way, please put it, put your questions into chat. It's more important you get answers than, uh, than get all the content over. So you've all heard of this pest analysis and a lot of, and some of you might be going, oh, where's the environment? Um, it didn't fit four by four, but <clears throat> clearly environment is your fifth. And so um, we're building a bigger course and it's called, and, and there rather than pest analysis or step analysis, it's called PESTL. Um, uh, the, um, uh, so you've got the, uh, the, the uh, uh, steep, sorry. Um, it's, it's got the, the environment in it. But basically it's, it's anything that's happening in the world. So you, I mean, the list is, I mean, horrendous, really badly long. You know, you've got um, the after effects of for us, after effects of COVID, Brexit, uh, war in Ukraine, social change due to um, the, uh, the the hybrid working, um, all the unrest because of inflation. There's huge, huge numbers of things that could, uh, and we see it on the news, you know, uh, the energy crisis, cost of living crisis, all of it impacts your business. Um, I've never seen anything like it for a long, long time. We're going back to the 80s when I saw things this bad. Okay, so that tells us what's happening, pressure on your business. Um, then we have 
like an inner circle of stuff that's close to you. So we've got the competition, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but you've got the threat of new entrants and the threat of substitution. Um, I know these this case is a bit old, but Blockbuster, they never jumped on the digital. I think they had the chance of buying uh, Netflix when it first when it uh, came out. They ignored it, and you know, so Netflix went, yeah, okay, we'll carry on, and uh, and, and you know, the rest is history. Um, you know, the thing called the Kodak moment. You know, the Kodak did did try and get into digital, but they were too monolithic to to make the changes. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and then you've got uh, at the moment bargaining power of buyers is usually the, the dominant thing for most companies, but um, of course with all the supply chain shortages and, and uh, things being in the wrong place uh, around the world, the containers and so forth, it's now re it's for many companies it's reversed. And you know, in the past, um, <clears throat> I noticed the the younger generation are quite happy to keep jumping between suppliers. Well, for those of us who've been around a while, um, uh, being having that relationship with a supplier is it's certainly if you're a manufacturer or whatever, and you're being consistent and you're not messing about and you're paying them on time, those are the guys who are still getting their goods and uh, their 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 product, uh, their mat raw materials. The ones who chop and change and you know cut you know cut uh, who are long payment terms etc. They're the last. They're the last in the queue. So we're seeing a thing called supplier loyalty coming back. Um, you know, something that uh, uh, the older generation understand, uh, but the younger generation I've seen not at the moment. But it, that that will change, I suspect. But this is very dynamic at the moment. This 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 bit here. Okay, so we've got a. Um, So another checklist. Again, these are all available in the course. Um, so these are the thing, these are some of the jobs you need to do. You know, how competitive is your marketplace? How do people do people find you or or do you find them? Um, that's quite a critical question as to whether you want traffic, whether you're going to use some kind of inbound marketing where, where people find you, or whether you've got to go out uh called outreach and, and go and get them. And um you know, there's there's quite a lot of research you can do these days. In the past, when I'd say, "Well, what do you compare to?" Do? Well, we can't find out much information, but of course, everybody leaves a digital footprint, so um, it's not that hard to find out what your competitors are doing. Um, and um, you know, is is you know, especially manufacturing. One of the things we had to keep a watch out for is if competitors failing, because if somebody failed. And they had, they had a whole customer base uh, of demand that needed fulfilling. And uh, it was a question of how quickly you could get to that in order to, to take on that extra work. And then you can look at how good they are at competition. And the I've slid this slide in. It's a bit contentious. For me, this is a little bit contentious because it's something we used to do in the old days. But one of the things I found is that people... Um, so I said, oh, we're good at lots of things. Well, there's only about, I put the slide in because there's only about three things, max, absolutely max, that you can be different from. And I'm going to show you a different approach. But I kind of included that. I've included it in the big course, um, which which will goes into this a lot more detail. Because um, it does ask some, it, it's kind of a summary of the questions you need to ask yourself. Um uh, but you have to be brutal when it comes to what your strengths are. The opportunities and threats come from the pest analysis or steep analysis. Uh, and then your weakness is, well, most businesses can should be able to write a long list. Um, you've got to be an amazing business if if uh, this is a short list. So obviously you need to pick out the your um, top five weaknesses and things that are stopping you from achieving things. You may be per not perfect at everything, but... Um, it's finding stuff that you, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, that you can fix and will make a difference to the business. Um, an athlete, if you think of a, a top athlete, they may be rubbish at quite a few things, but they'll only fix the stuff that's important important to to winning. Um, 
Okay, this is um, a game changer book, uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. By um, it's a bit tricky to read, so um, you might be better sort of. There's quite a few summaries on the web, um, and at some point, I guess, uh, well, certainly the paid course goes into a lot, a, into a lot more detail. Um, but it, but it is a game changer, and the reason it's a game changer is to, is to get you to think about. Um, how to create an uncontested market space. Now, obviously, in this short time, this is a whole workshop in itself. But the reason for bringing it out is as part of your strategy development process is, is you, you go through the Blue Ocean strategy uh, process. So the way to do that is you list out all the key features that, you're, that you, you compete on. Um, uh, and then you list out your competitors and you rank those competitors between zero and 100. You then end up with a curve, with a strategy canvas curve. And um, ideally, so the, the, the best the best example that everybody can relate to is, e is um, uh, EasyJet. Uh, obviously, lots have changed since EasyJet came out. When EasyJet first came out, there were no, there were, you had to book through the web, website, and the website was dreadful. Um, but when the fares were so low, you, nobody minded. You know, you'd put up with that. Um, you basically legged it onto the plane. There were no set seats, so the best you, you got the best seat if you were first in the queue. Um, you know, and, and, and that's evolved, and, and of course, there's more competition in there. Um, but uh, they they made a strategic move. And that, that really helped them. So think about, <clears throat> obviously, you can't be an easy jet, but there's generally a lot of building things. So the reason, I mean, we are started life as a consultancy. We then moved into being a digital agency. And then I realized that actually we needed to, to do the consultancy at, 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 the, um, at the start because we were being asked to design websites when we didn't have a clear picture of who the buyer persona was, what their pains were, et cetera, et cetera. So we then were, we were just building something that looked pretty rather than building something that converts. And I'd rather build something that converts uh, from, because that's what people are paying for. Um, gone are pretty, pretty websites, uh, in my view. So again, set of actions, again, available in the course so that you can do this at your leisure. But that's the jobs that need to be done from, from this particular section. So what's it going to be? So some of this, some of this stuff's from an MBA. Um, but uh, and some of it is is quite old. Uh, Ansoff goes, I think, back to the 60s. Um, but I think it's a really useful way of, of thinking about things. So for most businesses, you know, on, uh, you know, it's about selling more. With the same products or now because the buyer is so when this in the 60s you you just sold products and advertise and so, so on so there was no difference between selling new products into an existing market and selling um uh, going into new markets with existing products the thing i would say now is that's changed so i would say this was um Market development is high, uh, high to medium risk, because you're basically going into a new market, which need, you need to know the consumers, you need the customers, the pains, the gains, etc. Uh, whereas selling um, uh, new products into an existing market means you can actually test those. You can say to your customers, "What do you think about this?" Uh, and you can certainly de-risk it a lot easier uh, than here. And then obviously. If you're a startup, you've got new products into a new market, which is which is a high risk. Um, we then got the product life cycle. If you watch Simon Sinek, he, he talks about this. Um, and whenever you launch, so we're launching Vision to Success uh, uh, the app. So we'll be we're already talking to innovators. <clears throat> We've already got those signed up, uh, and then we'll be looking for early adopters. And once those guys get going, then we can expect the, the majority to start, early majority. Uh, if you've, um, you know, if you've been a, a long established in the marketplace, you might find that your sales are starting to decline. 
and uh, and therefore your market your marketing is probably reducing because uh, the late majority have finally got the heads around it and the laggards are still using rotary dial phones uh, that you see in museums um, so the other thing is is the boston matrix so when you launch a product it's called a question mark because assuming you're launching into a market that's growing you want to grow your share of that market you're going to enter about here um and then hopefully with more marketing more brand awareness and so forth they become a star because you've now got a decent share of the market and you are um you you've uh and the market's still growing <clears throat> so those are stars it then drops to cash cows when um, the market grows slows, but your share stays the same. So I ran a business 20 years ago where we had 60 plus percent of the market. So we, we didn't have to do much actual marketing. It was more about keeping in touch with all the businesses that we're working with and, and keeping them happy. Uh, and then if if everything drops, your share drops and the growth drops, um, and then you'll find that uh, profitability also drops. But I had a brainwave one day. I said, well, these two seem to be mapped onto each other. <clears throat> so I mapped the Boston matrix onto the product life cycle. So here, if you've got a cash cow and, the, and it's it's the, the sort of market still buying, but it's it's, it's um, you don't need to do much marketing, then cash cows are great because that's where you can invest in new products or services where, because things have changed. Um, uh, and, and you can sort of build on this with different um, with different products. So you have uh, a nice mix of, of of new products, question marks coming in, uh, stars which are your current which are currently doing well, and then your cash cows which are are, are bringing in the cash. Obviously, <clears throat> you need to be not not carrying any uh, dogs because selling to laggards is very difficult. And um, you're in a declining market, so that's the point where you exit, or you put it to a point where it, it, it's not going to cost the business much. So then we come. So this is so this is a segmentation. You know, grouping your customers based on geographic, demographic, behavioural, and psychographic factors. You know, so that the base they've all got. The, you know, that group of that segment has all got uh, the same. Um, uh, the same buying requirements <clears throat> and then you need to be clear you know you'll have hopefully you'll have your business will have values if you don't then that's something you need to work on uh, because people buy into your values especially the younger generation um and if their your values don't resonate with them then you know you're going to have a problem um and here, if we think of positioning as pilot, you know, sort of pilot height, sell it cheap, or whether you're at the quality end, you know, whether you're um, uh, whether you're an Aldi or whether you're an M and S, um, you know, which where do you sit in that market? In a recession, we have a flight to quality, but given I think we'll call it economic turbulence, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I've never never been anything like this before. Um, and then, and then we're going to write, okay, which which micro segment, which segment of that bigger segment are we going after? And I'm going to give you an example <clears throat> because it, it's easier to um, easy to explain. <clears throat> so, if we're a business selling marketing services to larger businesses, um, so the segment is medium-sized businesses that need to use services of a marketing agency based in the UK. Positioning is we want to work with businesses who respect quality and are prepared to pay for it. Uh, so the mess that message needs to resonate. Any messages need to resonate with that audience. And then, <clears throat> so there may be, so for example, we do work with FinTech and uh, a range of other, other sort of companies. Um, if, if we say telling a phone service, for example, you may sell to contact centers, insurance companies, medical, uh, centers etc well you may be selling the phone the same phone system but the priority of, of what's of of what they want will be different and your message needs to be different your buyer persona will be different uh, and so that means uh, you need to make sure you you target um 
uh, you're on to, your, your message resonates with those with those sectors so then that's where you get specific and uh, we haven't got time here but we talk about market attractiveness it may be that you've got lots of medical background you may be selling, selling firms but you you really know the medical sector really well <clears throat> well you would focus on that rather than say selling to a contact center where you may may not have that experience even though it's the same piece of kit that you are you're selling to them um uh, so here's the actions going forward again they're in the they're in the, the the course the online course on the hub um and so it's it's basically just summarizing you know asking those questions from the um uh th that we just covered in the in the previous notes so we have covered the buyer persona uh, a number of times. So I've actually cut the slide deck quite short on this, um, but we'll pick up the key points. So um, you need to know who makes the buyer decision. You know, and if these all these companies may be buying marketing services, but because of the size of the company, you know, who they are, what they're trying to do, then, um, you know, their challenges will be different uh, for, for each one. And you can't sell what you'd sell to a smaller business to say a medium and, and also to a larger. So <clears throat> um, these days you have to be quite specific. Um, you say, well, we can sell to anybody. Well, the problem is uh, um, these days that probably means you're going to sell to nobody. Um, so be specific, be the champion of wh whoever you are. So we sell to five to, to 50 size businesses. We've created the hub so we can handle uh, the one to five uh, size businesses and hopefully hopefully help you grow to size five six or whatever and then our agency services will be more appropriate um we don't deal with any companies above 50 just not our marketplace um and so you need to be be really super clear we do not go after large contracts tenders and all that sorts of stuff so we so it means you have to make choices you say, well, you could do all those things. No, you can't. You need to be really good at what you do. And I mean really, really good. One of the things that uh, picked up a few years ago was the empathy canvas. And I kind of like this because <clears throat> um, we don't have time to, to cover it in any depth here, but um, uh, you know, you, the way the brain's set up is set up for stories and it's set up so emotion sells. So... It, part of the analysis is you could understand what they're feeling um <clears throat> and uh, i've got an example coming up uh, and then we we've, we've already stood a touch on the pain points you've all heard of features attributes benefits but um th that that's kind of important that you your features do derive benefits but it's all about the customer it's all about the buyer so what are their pain points what are the pain points you're trying to sell so if your feature has got something that doesn't solve those pain points, it fails the so what question. You know, so each of your features, you need to be going down and going with the buyer's persona in your head, so what, so what, so what? Um, and does it help the person reach their overall goals? And then because there's so much noise out there is looking at their influences. So if we look at um, uh, sort of selling to a small business owner, you know, frustration, anxiety, things not working, time pressure, not understanding. Um, and then, you know, what's influencing? Well, pretty much everything. Um, and then, you know, what are their pain points? Not enough, not enough inquiries is, is generally, as a business advisor, when I was just giving out general advice, 90, 75 to 80% of, of the stuff of the businesses I dealt with it was not having enough inquiries. And of course, as an agency, it's, it's 100% not having enough inquiries. Uh, and then not having a lack, uh, lack of time, one of your critical and technical creative skills. So hopefully that's why you guys are on the call today. So then I combined them um, because I was building the, the model, the, the app. I needed some way of going, right, okay, let's, let's try and simplify that. And, and so we we uh, then created this, um, <clears throat> which uh, sits in a tabular form uh, on the app. Um, so we we capture their, their buyer persona, the sector they're in, what tasks they're trying to do, what their values are, what influences them, what's our marketing strategy, and we're going to be covering that briefly in a, in a minute, 
um, key bits? What are the challenges? What are the pain points? And what will actually motivate them? And this is the, which is where Blue Ocean comes in, by the way. Just fix their pain points is not Blue Ocean. That's that's just being able to sit at the table and do business. What will motivate them is if you can do something special for them, if you can do something different for them. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be much. We were talking with a client the other day, and he, he wanted to build um, uh, a, a sort of a, almost a marketing machine to generate inquiries. And he'd, he'd done some fantastic work himself. And then we sat down with him and said, right, okay, I know you're in the industry he was targeting really well anyway. And we talked about sort of how we could sort of adjust what we do that would build on what he, he was doing, um, but give him that marketing machine. And, um, and, and I, I'm really pleased with the proposal put together because it's, it wasn't expensive um, and um, it, it, it would work. And, it'd be, and it's different to what the competition are offering. You can't buy, buy what we've offered him. Um, so uh, uh, that, that was really pleasing. We'd, we'd really, I think, hit the nail on the head there. Um, so again, more actions. <laughs> um, I'm, I, as a coach, I'm always a believer in, in, in action. Um, you know, if, you, if uh, procrastination is the worst thing I see when I go into a business, and so, again, in the course or on the slide deck, which will be made available in the next day or so, uh, you'll be able to then sit down and look at those actions. Okay, value proposition. We've, we've got to get over very succinctly the value we offer to a prospect. Um, people's attention spans are getting less. It's harder to, in a networking environment uh, to... Um, you know, you've all been in those networking environments where somebody start to give their life history and already you, your brain's gone. It's you're, you're out of there. <clears throat> so um, you've got to be able to capture their their imagination. So we've got a few examples. I like Uber's smartest way to get around. Um, works great in Manchester. Not very good in Shropshire where I am. Um, but, um, but in Manchester, it's, it works really well. You know, one tap and a car comes directly to you. You know exactly where the driver knows exactly where to go, um, and uh, payment is completely cashless. There's, it's all handled through the app. And what I like is you can see when the app, when the driver's on his way to you, so you know that you know within a few minutes he's there, and it gives an estimated time. So uh, you know the smartest way to get around. I, I'd agree with that. Uh, I don't know whether you're into Apple products. I used to be very, a diehard Windows guy, um, but then uh, Charlie said no, we're, really, we're the business is going to run on Macs. So I went, oh dear. Um, so then spent a year or so getting my head around it. But I've I've got I'm surrounded with my Mac uh, Apple gear now because it does all talk to each other. Uh, if I need to just run out, I've got the iPad there, the phone. I can do all sorts of stuff on it, and it all all syncs. You know, so if I'm sitting on the train, I might just be doing some edits on a document on the phone. Come into the office, open the Mac up, and I'll carry on on the Mac uh, seamless without. You know, without stopping, it doesn't happen with um, with Windows in my experience. So then we've got Slack. Um, be pr more productive at work. Uh, at work with less. Well, we use Slack in the business. I totally agree with that. Um, it means I have eyeballs across the whole business without being involved. Um, which as a business owner, that's that's really good because you know stuff's happening. Um, may not know the detail, but you know, hey, those actions are being carried and so forth. And it's it's all there. <clears throat> There's no hidden messages, no hidden emails and things like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like Slack from a business owner's point of view. So we need to think about uh, how do what do your customers value? Now, if you've got customers, go and ask them, find out what they want. Um, you know, why do they buy from you? Uh, larger companies do this by surveys, you know, but as a, but if you're dealing personally with somebody, you can say, well, what is it that you like about what we do? Um, and if they say, well, I like this bit, but I don't like this bit, then you've got some something to work on because um, it's all about how are you different from the competition so they don't go, oh, well, I'll, I'll get three quotes. You know, you go, to, you know, well, you can get three quotes. That's great. But actually, do these do they also do this bit, which we know they don't because we've done our research. So again, we've got the paid course, which um, I'm working on at the moment, which hopefully due out soon, which uh, goes into a lot more detail on, on how to do this. 
Uh, but you've got three components. So it's it's what the customer job they're doing, what is it? So if you think of bookkeeping, you know, what is it uh, a bookkeeper does? Um, what things does does it need to do? So if we take zero, for example, we move from sales to zero um, because yes, it can do all the bookkeeping stuff, tick, but it could also do automatic bank re, uh, bank reconciling. Oh, you know, the bank fees were a lot easier to set up. It could do the tax digital. It could do, you know, it can do the corporation tax digital and all these sorts of things. Um, uh, and we keep pushing it to see how much more we can get out of it. Uh, and those are the game creators. Those are the bit that sets you apart. So the um, stories. We're programmed to receive information by stories. When you've got so much information out there, so much noise, you've got to resonate with your customers very quickly. And stories is the sense-making mechanism that we all use. It's our survival mechanism. So we look at your brain so the survival is the primary role of the brain so it's constantly scanning the, the, the you know the environment for solving problems seeking inspiration seeking acceptance ex affection etc and um uh, great stories in uh, pursue an endeavor to achieve one or more of those traits and the brain tunes out if it doesn't so if if you're talking to somebody and uh happens with very busy people you know their, their attention spans are, are quite short and I can, you know, I got used to spotting when somebody's tuned out, you know, and um, and so I, I just stop, you know, and and, we, and I change direction or, or whatever because what I'm saying is not resonating with them, um, maybe turning to a question, <clears throat> you know, if, if uh, uh, and so on because if if you see them tuned out, you, you, every, everything from then on is 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 gone, and it's because the story hasn't been strong enough to get through. Um. Just a reminder that emotion sells and um, uh, logic rationalizes. So when you're when you're selling something, you need to be able to um, do both. Uh, the um, it's it, it, it sometimes you know if you bought something on emotion and uh, it's got post purchase remorse is what it's called. If the brain goes, uh, that wasn't the best idea. So how do you do this? So this is a this is a this is a book recommendation. Um it's it's a great book. Um again, our longer paid course covers this in a lot more detail, but um it's it's the way it's the formula, which we're going to show you in a minute, is, is how you then turn that um all that strategy and all that messaging and all that buyer persona stuff into a story into something that's going to grab people's imagination and um and so the the, the structure is really simple because stories are really the structure of a story is really simple um the customer is the lead character this is he, he reiterates this through the book the customer is the lead character you are not the hero the cat the customer is the hero um they have a problem that needs to be overcome um and then as you as a supplier, um, you know, like Yoda in, in Star Wars and so on, you're the expert guide. You know it all, but you're not there to solve their problem. You help to help them, guide them through it so they can solve their problem using your products and services. And then agree a clear plan, quotation, project plan, you know, maybe just a straight purchase. Um, and then... You know, to look at, I mean, you, you look at the um, the adverts for cars these days, they talk less and less about what the car does. And it's all about the lifestyle that you might um, uh, project yourself onto if 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 you if you own that car. Um, um, clearly, so, so, you know, they don't obviously, they, they, they may show failure at the start, you know, something not not in a great situation and then they get the car and woo, woo everything's pretty and everything's wonderful and i'm living my lifestyle and uh, and all these sorts of things so the process is you define your character we've done the buyer persona um you you understand what their pains are uh, and their problems uh they meet you the guide um and this is where these educational where you've if you're doing anything educational that's always great. We're getting more demands for uh, explainer videos, for services, for 
we're just loading 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 up one for people to do a course so we've got an explainer video to take them through it gives them a plan be really clear what you want your customer to do so many websites don't have any clear journey through them the customer goes oh well, that's that's okay but he doesn't tell them what they want to do next we call them ctas call to action um, make sure your website has got plenty of CTAs on and there's a genuine story there. One of the things that mobile usage has given us is the fact that you can scroll. So you can actually put the whole journey on the front page, um, you know, so that it takes them through and recognizing the different people, you know, so you've got your activators and pragmatists who just want to crack on. So you have a call to action on the, on the, the first bit they see. And then you might have some more stuff to lead other people on and then more calls to action through. So all the time, there's a sale, there's a thing in sales and it's not about being aggressive sales. It's all about always be closing. Um, and then um, you, uh, you know, they get a light bulb moment and you see success and they see failure. So this is the template. You can do this in a spreadsheet. It's it's really simple. The uh, brand story story brand used to have um, a uh, an online system, but they've taken that down now, which is a shame because you can do it online. But a spreadsheet is fine. It's not uh, it's not difficult. Again, copy this from the um, uh, from the course or from the video, the workshop video. So again. Here's your um, next uh, job list list of jobs. You see, there's plenty of things to keep you amused uh, once you've doing doing this course. Um, <clears throat> so, elevator pitch. Um, so, if you want to get your message out quickly, you know we help here. We help small businesses who need a solution to to grow in their uh, their business by using uh, our uh, marketing strategy uh, and consultancy to help them achieve a successful business. So <clears throat> you need to write your elevator pitch, 20 words or less, um, so that you can hit them quickly in a, in a networking uh, situation. Um, so we, so ours is we help grow uh, focused uh, entrepreneurs who need to generate more sales by using a proven processes to develop costed marketing strategies to enable them to successfully grow their companies. And in a conversation, you might shorten that. <clears throat> but you, you get the gist. Um, it's a great way to, great way of putting your uh, one-liners together. Again, more actions. Um, I do recommend you buy the book. It is a good book. Um, and so we'll have the paid course, which uh, will take you through it step by step. So a quick reminder of the customer journey. We have covered this in previous workshops. Uh, so we're all humans. So before anybody buys anything, you've got the no like, trust, buy. Uh, and that this, this is how it maps onto the marketing funnel. So awareness stage, uh, people are aware they've got a problem. Um, they started to find suppliers. They're starting to kick tires on things. And then hopefully at acquisition stage, they're signing up. So that's why we have the hub. You know, it's not not to sell to anybody, just to, so that you're in our kind of marketing mix, but you're getting great resources in exchange. Um, and uh, we don't we don't mark heavily market to that. There's a weekly digest, which is what what's happened on the hub, and that, and that's it. And it's just about being there, ready for when you're ready to buy, because only five percent of your market. I haven't got a chance to put it in here, but only five percent of your market is ready to buy at any one time. And the rest of the time is all about keeping everybody aware of, of kind of what you do but without shouting at them. And then building that engagement through conversations, through emails, through whatever your sales process is to start that conversation, to build that trust. So that when they get to the, when they want to go by, that you then convert. So uh, we we'll skip through this. Uh, top of funnel is what do visitors need? Seventy-five percent of visitors, and then we start to start to lose them. Uh, Twenty percent uh, can I solve the problem? And then why should I buy from you? And I've just realised the typo on here because it should say that uh, Mofu and Bofu. <laughs> so even though I've been through this loads of times, um, yeah, spotted that one. Um, 
Okay, so what resources do you need? Number of people who say, oh, I'm doing some social media. I'm expert to get inquiries. No, social media is top of funnel. Uh, webinars are top of the funnel. We will not make any sales from this workshop, even though there are, what, 27 actually in there. There are about 50, 78 who are on the email list saying they were coming and they'll get a reminder of where the, the workshop was, the, the recording, and there's another 50 plus out uh, on Restream. Um, we'll not get, we'll, we'll have raised awareness, but we won't make any sales. So then hopefully, you know, over time, people get into conversations, which has happened. Uh, they'll go, yeah, okay, I th I, that resonates. I think I think I could do, I need to do something now. So that's our 5% starting to to say, yeah, I think we need to to do something. And then, you know, Zoom, uh, web chats, et cetera. If you haven't got web chat on your website, please put it on. It makes a difference. Makes it easier for people to do business. It's all about reducing the friction. And then hopefully you get orders, inquiries, quotations, et cetera, whatever it is that you need. Uh, this is the overall process. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. But if you, but people, you know, the funnel does, this is a reminder that the funnel looks like it's, it's a one, it's a, it's an, a linear journey. It's not. It's, it's very much uh, going around the houses, starting again, looking at things, going back again, uh, and eventually hopefully coming down. And, and you've got to have tools and techniques so if you if you're doing a monthly email newsletter, that's great to a consented email list. Um, that can be that can be super helpful to keep everybody a reminder of what you're doing. Uh, social media, regular social media does the same thing, um, not quite as targeted. But it's all about keeping people informed without selling to them. You're not double glazing sales them. Um, so marketing rule seven. Um, it's really old. This it's from the film industry of the 1920s, but it's it's all about having all these things running at a, at a level you can do and a level you can afford. So if you can't do, you know, if you can do one post a week, that's great. It's all about keeping that that consistency, making sure that you are putting your con articles, writing an article maybe for your website, putting it up on social media. It depends on your audience, of course. Um, but people will need to touch you at least seven times before they will uh, do business with you. In the model, in the app, we will be, be, be providing quite comprehensive um, sort of ecosystems, we call them, on on how your system should look. So, and if we if we've not got if when you get hold of the app, you go oh. It's, that doesn't reflect what we do, then uh, over the next few um, months, I'll be building uh, a lot more. <clears throat> uh, and again, you know, th they're all different. E-commerce is a different to um, heating companies or security companies selling B2B and B2C. Um, different people, different different prospects need different things. And then we do, do, do quite a bit of um, selling uh, software as a service, uh, which is a bit more techy. We use a system called Creately to create these. Uh, if you've only got 60 items on it, on the flow chart, it's free. It's really good, really easy to use. We pay for it, but it's it's buttons. Uh, it's great value. And, and then that'll allow you to capture uh, uh, all, all, your, uh, all your processes. So um, we've come to the end. Um, it has been a little bit of a speed um, a, 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 a speed run through, um, but there is the course, so you can then sit back at your leisure and do it. It's on the hub. I'll say Rachel's popped it into the um, into the chat there, or if you type in yeah and, and uh, say free to join up. There's seven courses on there now, and we've got at least another three in the pipeline. Plus, there'll be a paid-for version of this, but it'll be a lot longer. Um, before we before we close, is any with no questions uh, that come from chat? Has anybody got any uh, uh, burning questions? 
Nope, stunned silence. <laughs> it's obviously the reason why I do this is coming up for lunchtime. So uh, you're all probably thinking, well, it's actually lunchtime now. So <laughs> it was great to see you all today. Um, just uh, want to just give you a quick before we finish. So very many thanks for attending the webinar. I, I do hope you found it useful. Trans recordings and transcripts will be on the website the next day or so. And then a, a link will be sent out to everyone who's registered. It's also a course on on the hub, so you can then um, take it at your at your at your leisure. Then in a month's time, uh, I'm excited to tell you that we will be joined by Sarah Clemson um, and, and Andy Henderson, uh, who I'm sure quite a few know. Uh, they're for, they're uh, representing Sherpa there, and they'll be doing a workshop on how to achieve unstoppable business growth by switching your mindset and focus. Um, uh, and Andy and Sarah have done huge amounts of work on this. They've done quite a lot of uh, very successful workshops with with working with business owners. So I'm really looking forward to to seeing uh, uh, what they say. Again, educational. Please sign up uh, if by going to um, as Rachel's put into chat. Been success events, and I look forward to seeing you in a month's time. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. See you later. Thank you.